Well, today's episode of Uncensored is brought to you by PointsBet. Check out PointsBet's great odds and offers. Download the PointsBet app today and gamble responsibly. Well, this one I've really been looking forward to, ladies and gentlemen, and really just by sheer popular demand from all my six fans out there. They just kept banging down the door to get this guest on. And this guest, well, when I debuted, he was one of the, the best back rollers in the game, one of the most skillful back rollers the game has seen. He's represented Australia and New South Wales in a glittering rep career, as well as leading the Chooks to their first premiership in 25 years when they defeated the New Zealand Warriors in 2002. Ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding for the one and only Brian Fletcher. Brett, what an intro. Thank well, you very much. Well, mate, uh, have you read your Wikipedia? No. Because I do a bit of research. A lot yeah, of us yeah, just... Yeah. It finishes at the end. It says, he's also known to have the biggest head man has ever seen. Yeah, that's... that's well, someone's do you reckon someone's put that on there? Well, unless, anyway. unless Julian Assange. <laughs> I haven't read Julian. Just on Julian Assange. Yeah. You know, because um, he's Mr. Wikipedia. Yeah. Did you know who's frothing over him? Pamela Anderson. No. She loves him. She's got hep- hepatitis, doesn't she? Does she? I think so. Still she wouldn't knock her back. She just loves her. Loves him. She was big in the day. Well, she still got that. She Huge. had the uh, barbed wire tattoo on her. Yeah, it? with Tommy. Tommy got the other yeah. one. Yeah. But my, um, I know we're, we're digressing here. <laughs> Yasmin Bleak as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she was good. Y-B. <laughs> <laughs> Why V. <laughs> You know, that's the most inter- interesting uh, opening start I've had, actually, the YB. Mate, we're here at your beautiful house, too. Thanks for inviting me over in, in no, North pleasure. Bondi. Yeah. Mate, you've been, you're a North Bondi boy. You're bon- you've grown up here. Grown up in Bondi, yeah. You yeah. played in the East. Did. Played for, so the, the, the local team here is Bondi United. Yeah. But I played for the Paddington Colts. Mm. Mortal, mortal enemies. Yeah. Yeah, don't like each other. Filthy Bondi United. Why didn't you go to Bondi United? Well, because my brother. So I'm one of seven. Really? I'm the baby of seven, right? Really? Yeah. That might explain a few things. Yeah, it does explain things. So all my bro- five boys, they all played. One of them played for the eldest, Terry, was probably the best out of all of us. Really? So he was playing like local A grade at 16. But uh, then got on the Bob Hope. And um, <laughs> the other the other three were playing for the Colts, so I just followed in. Yeah. And that's and then you meet, I went to school down here. All my schoolmates were playing for the Colts. He's, he's had a pretty good side cover. Wasn't there a couple of blokes that went on to play first grade or around that oh, era? Oh, a couple of years old. Fieldy, yeah. yeah. Craig Field, Jim Dimmick, yeah. Scott Murray. They had the gun team. Yeah. They didn't get beat. I think they didn't get a point scored against for like five years. Yeah. Who did you support growing up? Bunnies. You did? Were. Bunnies. Mad Bunnies, man. Well, that brings us to the... Um Your Hero brought to you by Swish. Swish is the most exciting and personalised fan experience. You're on Swish. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, Swiss. yeah. yeah. Be a well, he's a, he's a local bloke. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Um, Mick? Mike? Mike and the Mechanics? Mike. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good uh, idea, actually. It's a great idea. Go to hayswish.com to find out more. It's, uh, I love it's, how you just throw a sponsorship yeah. halfway through. Right, and, they're, and, they're, and they're willing to sponsor me. That's so good. How, what, like, why would anyone pay me money? But That's fantastic. Um, it goes straight to me, missus, because obviously I can't be trusted no, with, you can't. with any money. Uh, who was your hero growing up? Um, well... In, in the sense of rugby league, yeah, or both. Tom Carroll surfing, surfing, yeah. yeah. Tom, because I obviously growing up in the, in the east, you surf. For the for the bunnies, Les Davidson. When because I was obviously yeah. South supporter, and during the eighties, middle like early eighties, not much chop, and then when I started, I suppose when I'm ten or eleven or twelve, that's when South went on that run. Yeah, like in the mid eighties. Yeah, a lot of minor premiers in eighty nine. Went out the back door. Yeah. Eighty seven, poor old. Um, Steve, Steve Maven, Maven. Yeah. I was out there that day. He was gone at half time, wasn't he? Hooked. Hooked. Hooked at half time. I was And he watched the second half at home, didn't he? On the team. Yeah, because he's a botany boy, so yeah. he would have he would have So what, and of course was that because the roosters were shit house in the No, 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 no. Why I went for South. Yeah. Well, I think it was because playing for Paddock Colts, we just followed South yeah. in the colours. Yeah. And my eldest brother, oh, the one closest to me, Chris, he yeah. went for South. Yeah. So I just followed you know, they all hated East. <laughs> so and all my mates went for East, yeah. you know, just try to be different. Yeah, We'd go out to the sports ground in the old days, and East and South was, was so shit. Yeah. Like in the early 80s. Like the, the Chooks were called the um, Transit Lounge, and South weren't much better. <laughs> and so there wasn't that much rivalry. Yeah. yeah, so no one really cared. It wasn't until the Chooks started getting really good, yeah. and then South were rank. Yeah. And then Rusty, brought Rusty came good, yeah. and now they're both... That's, you know, that, that's why the rivalry is yeah. now, because they're both... Really strong clubs. Yeah. But growing up, people say, oh, they must hate each other. They're not really. No one cared, did they? No, because well, they're both rank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what was it like? Like, obviously, Bondi's, you know, it's a 
properties. I was talking about your mate Bobby's house yeah. just went for six million. Was, yeah, you know it's obviously a, a tourist attraction. It's massive now, but it was it different when you were growing? So up? different. Yeah. So we had, we, you know, where the golf course is up yeah. here, and there's the stink pot. Yeah. So there's a big, the big vent sewer. Yeah. There. It's not in use anymore, but. Before 1994, every bit of sewer in the Sydney <laughs> metropolitan area... So my career would have gone there as well? <laughs> no. <laughs> if it was no, that wasn't down the toilet. <laughs> every every bit of sewer in the Sydney metro area went to North mm. Bondi and just spewed out the cliffs. Yeah. So we'd be at school. I went to school just down the road here. And when you hear the... When you could smell the, <laughs> the sewer, because the nor'easter was blowing, we knew to go surfing because... Dollar notes and two dollar notes really would float around the point, <laughs> but you had to, go. swear to God. Yeah. So as soon as you smelt the nor'easter and you could smell <laughs> the, the the shit, right? Three thirty went. See you down the beach, boys. Because Bondi was. What, poor. what was your biggest take? Oh, I can't. I, I tell you what I did do once. I tell you what I did. I was delivering medicine. <laughs> I had a job, right? I was a delivery boy for this joint. Uh, uh, <laughs> this prescription medicine. Well, hang on. This gets better. Probably explains a lot. <laughs> So my job, it was on it was on Bondi Road, and it was called. I won't give the name of the chemist. But <laughs> my job was I was twelve, and my job I got fifteen bucks a week, five days. <laughs> I have to deliver what I thought was medicine to like nursing homes, which it was. It was legit. I was because in those days the old people couldn't get to the chemist. So mm. anyway, I, I was doing it for a while, and then one day it was just an envelope, <laughs> and I held it up to the sun, and I went. It was. And it was the new hundred dollar note, the grey mm. nurse. And I said, What do I do here? I was twelve. <laughs> you stole it. I stole it. <laughs> yeah. But I shouted all the boys at Easter Show. Yeah. Anyway, I loved it. Did oh, they ask you where you get money from? No. No. I, I, I must have told them. Yeah. Because none of us had money growing up. Yeah, like, I'd Bondi, take it now when I'm forty. <laughs> Bondi well, imagine what a hundred dollar yeah. grey nurse we were. But Bondi would be a different place. And they fixed the sewerage. And I, I always say this. Nineteen ninety six, Jason Donovan moved into South Bondi. He was yeah. like the first celebrity. Yeah. And then Bondi just went through yeah. the roof. Fixed the series. So, get Jason so you getting $100 notes in envelopes started very young. <laughs> it just didn't start when you are at the Roosters. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Craig. <laughs> it was one time in Market City. I don't know <laughs> I'm not going down there. But yeah, the job the job is a chemist. Anyway, I was delivering medicine. Found the $100 note one day. Took the boys out. Years later, <laughs> years later, I, I was playing footy. And another bloke who I knew who was delivering for another chemist <laughs> further up. So we were like rivals, you know, going up. Years later, like... I'm mid twenties. He said, "Mate, do you know what we were doing?" I said, "No." He goes, "Mate, we were m- moving morphine. <laughs> morphine was huge. Like heroin was huge in Bondi, huge." And um, he's adamant that we were we were Aaron Mules <laughs> <laughs> as a twelve year old <laughs> moving. And I went, "There's no way." And he goes, "Well, mate, you were going. What? Where were you delivering it to? Were, were you taking anything back? No, nothing, no. nothing. So I delivered it off. But it was weird because we were going into units." In Bondi Road, and I remember looking back on it now, they weren't old people. No, they were young. But they were saying, and I never asked the question. Yeah. I just went, well, well, you're you? 12. Yeah, I said, why, why are you taking that? But looking back on it, they mu- we must have been doing something shit. Yeah. Because why else would I have a $100 note? <laughs> anyway, the Easter show's got hammered. Yeah. Ever get any show bags? Oh, yeah. 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 And bought bought some. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and bought some. Um, Things with lollies in them as well. <laughs> so, but, but in those days, they were like three, <laughs> three bucks. So you can imagine. I, yeah. I had a hundred. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was good times. Uh, now, were you, were you a good player as a kid? You were you always big because you're a big man. Yeah, I was sort of, it was weird. I was sort of a big kid, but then I got to about 16. And when I left school, so I left school at 15, mum said to me, <laughs> <laughs> to deliver, Mum said, "Oh, well, school, school wasn't school wasn't my go." Yeah. So I became a plumber. Mum said, "You can become, get a trade, or you go to 11, 12. Because those days, you know, everyone was a tradie. Yeah. So I became a plumber. But when I left school, when I was fifteen, I was fifty-eight kilos. <laughs> what? Like tiny. It's like me after a big weekend. <laughs> tiny. Anyway, that next year, I grew and was eighty kilos by yeah. the end of it. So it just was coincidental because I was digging and yeah. as you do, and that's when I probably, and I was always playing footy. Yeah. But I was, I was handy yeah. as a kid. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know if this is true. Well, you can clarify. Yeah. Was it... Did you get... You were playing reserve grade at the Roosters. Did you get dropped from Roosters? And yeah. Gus Poit yeah. bring you up to first grade? Because so, he, he knew you were a good player. He just needed you to... Well, 
Were you just a bit around the boys? You know, you had your local mates. Was it a bit like that? Something like what's the story going? So about? Gus came to the Chooks in '95. '93, <clears throat> I played flag with South, <laughs> and I don't know why. I don't know. I don't, maybe because I didn't have that ambition to to play mm. rep footy. Like rep, and anyway, I got asked to play, and I went oh, okay. So I played because the East East Juniors went to the South Juniors, so we combined. And they said, oh, do you want to come and, and try out? And I went, oh, okay. So I tried out, made the team. And then Arthur Beetson, after a game, grabbed me one day. And yeah, Arthur, everyone yeah. knows Arthur. And he says, oh, mate, we want you to come to the Chooks. And I went, no way. <laughs> I didn't say no way to Arthur. I went, Fuck, I'm going to Chooks, you know. Fuck yeah. them. And I knocked him back. And this was 94. And, I'm going, yeah. and then the next year... People were going, why did you do that? And I, I don't know. So, 95, he grabbed me again. The start of 95. And he said, we want you to come and play for the Chooks. Play for Chooks. And Gus was coming at that year as well. So, I came, I went to the Chooks and Rico was there. Yeah. And I knew Rico. I didn't know anyone else. And they tell a funny story. I rocked up in boardies. <laughs> you to, know, train. to train. To <laughs> train. And everyone's going, what are you wearing boardies for? And so, anyway. And then, yeah. So, the, 95, played 21s. Yeah. Played one game. And Gus said, I'm putting you in reserve grade. So I've gone from playing park footy, one game of 21s, to now playing with like Salvo, yeah. um, Graham Mackay. Because uh, in those days, if you were first grade, yeah, you'd get dropped reserve, out. So yeah. it was like, you're playing against men. Yeah. And I was just going, this is unbelievable. So I played three reserve grade games around, got me in the match. Then I was just started sitting on the bench for first grade. I'm going, oh, this is, because in those days, you sit on the bench. Yeah, this is, keep going. This sit is unbelievable. Yeah. How good is this? I'll be in first grade in a week. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sat on the bench, nothing. Anyway, back to reserve grade, back to reserve grade. Sat on the bench, didn't get a run. And so for the next two years, it was pretty much that. It never n- never looked like getting a run. So 96 was a bad year. But not for, for you. Well. Or for Eastern Suburbs in general. So we well, Freddie Turnup comes in 96, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I move out of home <laughs> to the Rose Bay Pork House. <laughs> <laughs> and... 96 is the year I get three strikes. From the club? From the club. Yeah. An incident where we got into a stink. The boys went out, we played pub golf. And in those days, you know, a par would be three schooners. Yeah. If you drink four schooners, you're, you're one, one under. under. Anyway, it was, this is in the Paddo days, mm. so it's 96. And after like the eighth pub, I'm leading. I, I got the yellow jacket. <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm like 25 under. <laughs> I'm like Tiger Woods. <laughs> I'm like Tiger Woods playing at Wallara. Yeah. <laughs> As you on the back nine. Yeah, I was flying. So me, <laughs> me and um, Mick Astini, who played for Chooks and um, played for South and Balmain, we were in the pokey room. <laughs> Unbeknownst to us, the rest of the boys got into a stink. Massive stink. You're not a fighter. I've, not never, a fighter. I've never seen you angry. Not a fighter. No. Not a fighter. And this no. is the thing. Anyway, we're playing pokies and we come out and we go, where is everyone? And the bouncer goes, mate, you blokes get out. Other security goes, get, get out. You blokes get out. You've, your mates have bailed. And we, we get out on the street. And we could see everyone's down the down the and um, bottom of Hargrave Street. Yeah. We're at the Bellevue, and there's these two blokes across the road just giving it to us. Yeah, fucking dogs. Look at you. Uh-huh. And me and Mick are going, "What the fuck's what going on?" Here? Anyway, this bloke's bat like br- bloody and bruised. Anyway, they've given it to us, coming over, and it's on. Like, uh-huh. and I go, "Mick, what are we going to do here?" <laughs> anyway, they're coming at us, so we flog them. Yeah, well, you got hands like baseball gloves, all the size. So, so we flog them, and think nothing more of it. Go to uh, down to Coogee, pa- uh, Coogee Palace, as you do. That was the to go the next day we're training no, the Monday we're training and Brian Canavan who was the football manager puts everyone in the dressing room and goes who's out on Saturday night <laughs> everyone in the dressing room whoever was and everyone said yeah we went out who got into a fight and me and Mick went on well yeah we did <laughs> no one else put their hand up. no one else put their hand up. <laughs> and they flogged these people. so then we we realised that the bloke we flogged one was the son of a high court judge who was just a smart ass. Yeah. You know, those rich... He probably needed it. He didn't need it. But th- they wanted to press charges, grievous bodily harm. It was heavy. So... Did it, what, anything, nothing come court. Had to yeah. get a court. There's a photo... <laughs> the boys played on the Matty John show. I looked like vanilla ice. <laughs> I had linen pants on. Big baggy linen pants and a white shirt. We got off. But between fines and legal fees that year... So I was on a contract of 25 grand... <laughs> Thirty grand I had to pay, so I so to, you owed money. I I owed the chips yeah. five grand. <laughs> but yeah, you're the only person to play for the Roosters and owe money. Yeah, so so you owed the five grand. Yeah, and I got into, there was two other indiscretions. Anyway, 
I basically oh, the third indiscretion was when I th- this was the final straw. <laughs> it was two thousand six. Um, they'd made the semis for the first yeah. time, the Chooks. And in those days, you go back to the club after yep. the game, and I'd play, been playing second grade. So I've had effectively two years in reserve grade. I'm sitting on the bench a million times, never got a run. So I, I, I was just going, this is dog shit. What a shit go this is. <laughs> you know, like, when like it's like anything. You, you get a taste of yeah. 21s, and you go, oh, okay, I'll handle that. I can play reserve grade. Oh, I can handle that. And then you want to keep keep going. More. You want to keep going because it's, it's fun. Anyway, the final straw was last round. The first grade team made the made the um, semis. And so they were up in the auditorium and getting presented to the crowd. <laughs> and I, I'd paid reserve and I was blind. <laughs> and it was big. It was, it was about the time of rock and roll wrestling. Yeah, and it's, mate, that, oh, I don't know, but when I got there, sort of early 2000s, I packed the joint out. Oh, yeah. The least club was Chockers. Chockers. There yeah. was a nightclub there called Bananas, <laughs> um, which is another story. I <laughs> probably can't tell that one either. Anyway, so I said to the boys, I said, I'm going to go give it to Rocky the Rooster, who was up. He was, the, he was the mascot. So I've come in like a, whirl, a whirlwind and jump up and give him an elbow. Anyway, I've knocked him off stage. <laughs> He's broken his back. <laughs> anyway, I get hauled bef- be- before the uh, the board. And I'll never forget, Arthur Beatson was there. Because I suppose Arthur was... The one bit, who got you across. Yeah, and he's a bit like, responsible. Yeah. So I had, like Arthur was so good. Like, so good to me. I um, And we're watching the video back. <laughs> CCTV CCTV just and Arthur's pissing or trying to hold his laugh in and they just went mate you, you're done I had nothing <laughs> to go in the contract this, you're done so I, I, I probably the, the, the three strikes I was gone yeah. and I and I and I wasn't I owed the money anyway so it wasn't, 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 wasn't a big <laughs> you loss. didn't mind leaving <laughs> forget, forget about the bill end of the season 1996 I'm up at Archie's which is a nightclub at Bonner <laughs> Junction so I leave I leave it out the chooks and no, you know you can't you, you, that was my career's done, and I run into Gus, <laughs> and it was just before Christmas, so they'd been back at preseason for let's say four weeks. He goes, "Where have you been?" I said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> goes, I got sacked. You, you haven't been to training. <laughs> and he goes, "Mate, I go, man, I got sacked. You, you, you know this. <laughs> you know this." And he goes, "No, no, no. You come back after Christmas." I went, "But what am I going to do?" Like he goes, "No, just come back after Christmas." <laughs> so I come back after Christmas and start playing all right, like in the trials. Yeah. I, I sort of knuckle down because, yeah. you know, you get the the, the, the uh, ultimatum. And then I started going all right and then no one mentions it ever again. <laughs> like no one ever says, didn't you get sacked? Yeah. And I go, the oh. players didn't say Well, they, they did when I first went back. They went, oh, you got sacked. But then it just sort of it disappeared. It was just, it was just weird. And it's funny. So did you ever have to pay back five grand? Did I have to pay that? Maybe they took it out of a new contract. They <laughs> probably did. They, yeah, they wouldn't have missed. And yeah, it was just really strange how I was sacked and then no one said anything. So I went, okay, this is sweet. <laughs> and, then, and then that year, 97, I got to play first grade. Yeah. But that was another story. So I came back and I got eight men of the matches in a row, like seriously, in reserve grade. I yeah. was flying. Gus still wouldn't put me in. <laughs> so I said, all right, you know, it didn't put me in. So I was... I was um, resigned to the fact I'm going to play reserve game my whole yeah. life, which wasn't too bad because we had a good team. Natty Wood, Benny yeah. Duckworth, like it was fun off the field. Yeah. We had a terrific time. Joey Thomas was out yeah. there. And um, then I had two of my worst games I've ever had, like shocking. And Gus pulled me out and said, mate, you're playing first grade. <laughs> so you've won eight men in the match in a row. The <laughs> that was Gus though, you know, like he's quite... Mind games. Yeah. So I, I didn't think too much about it back then. And then played two games. Uh, sorry, got... Played two worst games, got picked, and that was it. Never went back to reserve grade. That's 97. Yeah. You debut for Australia Anzac Day 98. No, 99. 99 was it? Yeah. Because I remember Dad was working at the um, football manager at the Raiders. Yeah. And you were, num- were, you, were you number 17, I think? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I was out of you and Mark McClendon for the last spot because the selectors ring me old man and say, look, we're tossing up between yeah. Brian Fletcher or uh, Mark McClendon. Yeah. Because uh, back then the, the Anzac Day test was on Anzac Day, so it was, it was in round six or round. Yeah. And they said, "Tell McClendon, just tell McClendon to you might be ready because if they go, it, it depends what Bozo wanted to go yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. I, I hopes or I, whoever's uh, a, hopes. Yeah, yeah. For an extra forward or an extra uh, yeah. back. So less than a year and a half after your debut, you're playing for, mm. playing for Australia. It was weird. And then so, your career just goes like poor old Mark McClendon. No one ever seen him since. He got pushed in the back by his <laughs> Exactly. Well, I reckon Freddie had something to do with that. Yeah. I reckon because Freddie, 
Freddie wasn't the skipper. I think Alf was the skipper. And Fred, Loz might have been the skipper. I think Loz was in. No, nah, Loz ret- uh, sorry, maybe retired. But no, 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 no. He was playing. Oh, no, Freddie was at lock, so Loz must have been skipper. Yeah. Anyway, whatever it was. I think Fred, <laughs> Freddie, <laughs> you should have been skipper. <laughs> I should have been. Freddie, Freddie said, said to me on the Friday before we played North, he goes, mate, I think you're going to get picked on Sunday. Yeah. I said, what did you fucking tell me before the game? <laughs> exactly. Tell me after. Tell me after. 24 games you played. I've got it written down here. 24, 24 games. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, about a year and a half. That's ridiculous. Like, for, like you said, you probably could have taken it more seriously or applied yourself better younger, but you must have been proud. That's, oh, yeah. ama- that's unbelievable. 24 games. Yeah, it was pretty... It was pretty... Oh, it's um, ridiculous. Yeah, it was pretty surreal, and at the time, hadn't played Origin yet. That's not even a full season. 24 <laughs> games. No. But we were flying. Yeah. You know, the chooks were, we were, we were Did flying. Did you there. always have that in, in your like Because you knew you had the ability to do things you could half ass it a bit early? Cause you, no, no, I didn't. I probably just thought of... You just enjoyed... No, not enjoyed. I probably just thought, oh, I, I was comfortable. You yeah. Know? You don't want to... But then, as I mentioned before, then you get a taste of it. Yeah. And you go, fuck, I can handle that. Yeah. And then you go, right, well... Because when you're playing, you know what it's like. You don't want to make a mistake. No, you know? yeah. And then by the end, you, when you're playing, oh, you're fucking rat's ass. <laughs> Throw, throw the ball at the back. <laughs> that was another thing, Gus. I wasn't allowed to pass the ball within my fifty. Because mate, if I had my arm for it, I was throwing. Yeah, it. like but you five meters out, ten meters out, I was throwing. But you, it. Cut, you sort of. Um, I debuted in '99, so you were like, like those Gordies and the. Yeah, but you pulled in the off like you were good ball play. Yeah, pre line, post line. You know, you had the around the back. Yeah, I suppose. Well, that was Arthur. Yeah, because Arthur always said to me, "You got to change hands," because Arthur could, was. Very both good both yeah. hands. He goes, mate, you got to hold the ball in your left hand because they'll work you out. I'm like, well, you know, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried it. Yeah. I was dog shit. Yeah. I, I, I remember like trying to do you're it. You're right hand. You're a big right hand. Yeah, right. I was trying to do it and it just didn't didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. But, um, and I, you know, I'm very impatient. Very, like mm. you. Yeah. So I reckon, looking back on my career, the reason why I was making like mistakes and Gus said, don't pass the ball, because I was impatient. Yeah. Like it was boring. I yeah. couldn't play now. Nah. I could not play now. Oh, like, I talked to Hindy about it. Hindy, when, Brian, when he's with Brian Smith, Hindy had to stay on the left side yeah. of his channel. And he wasn't allowed to pass it. He had to just run there. And I said, but what about if it's like a four on two over yeah. there? You let, <laughs> no, I had to stay down there. Like, that yeah. would do my head in. Yeah. Different styles, but wasn't it? Different styles. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about Gus. How, how, um, just from listening to how you talk to him just in stories, and when it, like, it seems like you had a, pre- you had a pretty unique. Relationship with him, like, like Gus's, yeah. you know. There's Freddie yourself. The, the ones he lets in, you know, you, you you're one of those blokes. You can take the piss out of anyone and get away with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but I suppose if you build up the yeah, but you, you had that, you yeah. had a good relationship with him. Yeah, it was yeah. important. It was important for your career. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he um, like I said, he he knew, like he knows what he's doing. Like he's still the smartest bloke yeah. in five of that I've ever met in rugby league. Mm. Like, but just very. Like the mind games. Mm. Like it, we'd go come to training and he'd sit, st- be outside the dressing room, <laughs> right at the gate, sorry. Not the dressing room, right at the gate. As you're walking out here, Smarks. And you come in and you well, and he goes, how do you think you went on the weekend? And you come in thinking you played good. Yeah. But you walk past him and, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> you know, because it wasn't so much video back yeah. in those days. And I'm starting around with, what have I done? You know? Or, yeah, how do you think you go? How do you think you're going? I mean, you don't want to give yourself a rap, do you? No. And he, you'd go, yeah, I think I'm going good. I could work on something. You'd go, huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just give me a noise. And then it'd fuck you, fuck you in your head yeah. the, whole, the whole week. You told me a great story about um, your Gus in Origin camp. Mm. A very sl- I tried to put a shot on him. Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't budge. Mate. You know redhead, redheads? <laughs> They're like just thick wrists and thick ankles. <laughs> like, he's just so solid. And, like, you, you forget that the era he played in. Yeah. Like... And he played in those tough packs of Newtown and Mate, Bulldogs. And, like, yeah, like he he just you, you don't realise like he was a tough man. Yeah. So I he was there at the bar in Orange <laughs> Camp and in Orange Camp so much fun. Yeah, as you know, he had all these tequilas or shots or something. On, and I said, well, I'm going to put a shot on a big man. So he's at the he's at the uh, paying for him. Didn't have the, the the shots in his hand, but he's paying for it. And I hit him. The, I was at the Coogee Bay and I flew and hit him. <laughs> he didn't. But I hit. I flew into his shoulder. And then he doesn't budge. He was like a building. And then I just, <laughs> and then I slid down past his um, waist all the way down to his <laughs> ankle, and I'm just holding on to one leg. 
<laughs> so then he's dragging me with one leg across the bar. Like this, with the shots. With the shots. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm smashing in the tables and I'm, I'm holding on to his head. And he's not dropping his... Not dropping, he didn't drop one. He's uh, just walking across like that. My, my favourite Gus story, <clears throat> 2004, I come in to the second game, Freddie comes back, and then I get 18th man for the third game, Baz comes back from injury. And, but I'm in camp, Gus wants me in camp all, all for the full 10 days. So this is beautiful for me. First three days were on the drink. Yeah. You know, I'm 21, 22 and love drinking. You know, that's all we did. So it's day, day three or day four and we're at Clovelly. Gus says to the boys, who doesn't want to have a drink? Who, who's had enough drinking? I'm like, oh, I'm going, thinking, should you put your hand up? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. One, one of those I, d- I don't, I want to keep, I want to yeah. keep drinking. I'll drink every day. And I'm thinking, but, you know, I'm 18th man, I don't want to be seen. And I was like, no, no, I look around at Minnie and a few of those Fitzy, those boys have been there and done it before. Like, they they don't put their hand up, so they obviously want to keep drinking. Who doesn't want to drink? Who's had enough? Who wants to go back to the hotel? So I look at the Fitzy and the boys, they keep their hand down. So, that was, so I'm, I'm in there getting on. Yeah. A couple of Dragons boys put their hand up. And Gus goes, that's the sort of fucking attitude that will fucking lose us the series. <laughs> Get to the bar. Might have had tequila shots. Oh, it's, yeah. And, we got, and he, le- he led the um, charge into, um, what's that Monday joint down at, um, down in the city there, Monday night joint downstairs. Oh, um, not, not um, St. Pat's. No, nah, no. Nah, oh, the Chambers? No, nah, near, uh, yeah, near there, near the, near the Central. Oh, the backpackers um, joint. Scooby Doo bar. Yeah, Scooby Bar, Scooby Bar. <laughs> Mate, I'll never forget. Scooby-Bah. It was one of my favourite. He was ordering snake, snake, snake shots. What are those? Snake bites. Snake bites. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on the dance floor. Like the whole team's there and now. We're in a new South Wales trackers. And Gus was in the middle of everyone. And I remember at the bar just thinking, he's Freddie, he's Gus. Watching these blokes early 90s. Yeah. Like, like we're in snake bites. I've got the red teeth and the red lips. I'm going, this is the greatest night ever, you know. I'm 18th man. Is you know, I'm not playing. Yeah. Right, yeah. He just, <laughs> just rocks back and forth on the heels. <laughs> and like Freddie's out there busting. It was just great. And then he was funny like that. Then he'd, he'd come grab you and tell a story. And the next day walk past me and not even say yeah, a word. Yeah, I think that was his go. Like yeah. he just didn't. Don't want to keep you keep you at arm's length. But my favourite Gus story involving you. Can you tell the one? I know it's uh, you're interviewing me, but can you, can you tell the story about the kicking game? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, so we 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 go down to Cronulla. Freddie retires. Yeah. So we're under the pump, you know. Sticky's under heaps of pressure. He's losing his shit at the team, especially at me. I'm losing my shit at the team. You know, it's just down the chain. Anyway, he's fuck, he wants me to improve my kicking game. So anyway, the, the whole game, we play Friday night against the Sharks. We get beat by about two, two or four points. This is no five. And he's just, we're watching the video. Gus takes over the video. Yeah. And he's kept just, he's just going amateurish, <laughs> just yelling it out, not saying anything about it. <laughs> or then he go, bleh, bleh, like pretend to be spewing, like when I touch the ball. And I'm sitting here like everyone's looking at me, and I'm like, but he's not telling me how to correct it. Yep. That's what happens when your halfback's amateurish. Like, so this is going on for 40, 50, 60 minutes. But I'm going, was, well, So who was in the conversation? Who was watching? The whole team. It's a oh. team video. He's doing the team video, but all he's commenting, commenting on is me. But not really. He's just saying amateurish or pretending to be sick yeah. every time I touch the ball. Nah. <laughs> like, and everyone's like, so Rick Allen, those blokes, you know, eliminate Sam. He's like, he's not going to defend me. Yeah. He's fucking giggling in the corner. <laughs> like, I see blokes in front of me and, like, their shoulders are struggling. Like, they're having a ball. We get beaten. Everyone's just got off scot free, you know. Like <laughs> blokes will be knocking it on or just getting smashed and shit off late out the back. Error. Just fast forward past yeah. that. So anyway, we're set. We're, we've got to set on the line now. I mean, kicking game wasn't great, but I I know the end of this set because I know, you know, I remember everything in the game. Yeah. I know. I put a rubber in down the short side. It stops half a centimetre before the dead ball on. I know this is a good kick. Yeah. Oh, he's going to have to give me a rap. So I put the kick in. See a Soliola, the great man. See, he's 18 at this time. Yeah. It's a Friday night at Shark Park. He chases this ball like a steam train. David Peachy picks it up. He's in the corner. He can't go anywhere. Just steady see her. Ste- see her comes <laughs> flying. <laughs> We're in the old moulded boots. Peach just steps him. See her just goes flying. He nearly ends up in Cronulla Beach down in Northy. See her. Goes and Peachy puts 20 metres on us. He just went, what sort of fucking kick is that? I said, man, it's a fucking good kick. It landed half a minute, half a minute from dead ball line. And he just turned around and looked at me. He goes, shut your mouth, kid. And the other boys went, he goes, I'll have you back in Canberra before I got you here. And his head was purple. Yeah. Like, and I shit myself. Like, yeah. Sticky would spray me, but I'd never shit myself. Like sometimes yeah. I'd, but, but Gus sprayed, and I shit my pants. Gus is a, yeah, that's what I'm saying, because he's tough. Yeah. Grew up in that tough era. I remember once, I used to take the mickey out of him in the video room. 
because he'd, he'd get a stick, right, and he'd, he'd pretend to play golf. golf. Anyway, I, I walk into the team, and being the mug lair I was, I pretended to be Gus. Gus was late, <laughs> right? Gus wasn't there. Anyway, so I'm there, and I'm doing all these actions, and doing all these mannerisms. mannerisms and stuff, and the boys are pissing themselves, and, I, and I'm hanging there like that. Anyway, I'm facing... It's up at ES Marks where you go yep. upstairs, so the screen's behind me. Anyway, I'm on there, and they're laughing, and they're just encouraging me. Anyway, all of a sudden, they just stop. They all stop. And I just go, you behind me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> <laughs> so Gus had stopped at the door and watched me just take the mickey. What did he say to you? Nah, nothing. nothing. Oh, mate. Well, he ca- was he, when did he, ca- he come back in 2002? Well, did you, you debuted 99, Origin? Same yes. year? Yeah, yeah, same year. Well, it's a drawn, drawn series, 99, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 2000. Possibly the greatest, one of the greatest squads ever. Yeah. You said, like Joey's coming off the bench. Joey's off the bench. Yeah, you know, so. Noddy was on fire then. You know, he had yeah. a couple of years in Melbourne. Gerza scoring a thousand points. Yep. Um, it was good times. Yeah, Freddie was on fire. You know, just skill right across the park. Gids yourself. Um, what was it like playing in that team? Yeah. Because cause she's. Well, I was sort of. Without being a lair, I was sort of used to it. You know, yeah. you. you, you in representative stuff, you know, because I played a couple of tests already, and yeah. we'd smash the Kiwis. But you, but but at this point, you're the best, one of the best back rowers in the world, if not the best. Well, no, not no, I don't. Well, you're in the top top few. Well, if you if you play an Origin, yeah, we'll call it. Yeah, but and it was just sort of the team we had, as you mentioned, Andrew Johns coming off the bench, yeah. like then playing hooker, yeah. like he couldn't. He couldn't make his way into the <laughs> as halfback. Back. Is that does that blow your yeah. mind? It's ridiculous. Even that that year we went and played the World Cup. Joel yeah, hooker. Hook, yeah. <clears throat> it was just that was a that was a great team great, too. That. that was a good team. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was just that era yeah. that you know, like Queensland had that that big run of eight and eight or nine yeah. in a row, whatever they had. So we we were pretty handy. Yeah, because um, yeah, that's obviously the, they talk about the grenade. That's the story you've told. But they fucking lost another three series. Like they always yeah. talk about. That's just one of the greatest. Well, the, yeah, they're saying that was motivation. It was bullshit. They lost another three series that's in a row right. before yeah. they kick, kick in the. Doesn't but fit. that that game, it like you you played that series. There was a couple of tight ones earlier. That's when Gordy called Bill Harrigan a cheat in game one game and he scored. Yeah. Game two is a real tough. He's win up at Suncorp, the old Lang Park. Yeah. Jory comes off the bench and kills it. Uh, and then game three is just fucking yeah. fifty six nil or something. Like it was like 50? Park forty. Yeah. What was that like? As an origin? Was it fifty six to sixteen? Well, it was probably. A, it was probably Gerd a, scored something like thirty odd. Points. Yeah, and that was my second series after the, like the first series we we drew, but lost because they yeah. had the shield. And I suppose that was. And we had um, Junior was our coach. Yeah, <clears throat> who'd never drank, but would act pissed. Yeah, that but, was strange. <laughs> but I'll give the best story there. But yeah, th- that year the, the two thousand team. Um, it was just too too easy for us. Yeah. Coming too easy for us. How, how did Junior go with? Because if I look back on my time and I look at some of the great characters, or the boys on the drink, you know, like you'd be one of the first picked. Joey, all the lies he, t- you know, like Holden Court. Not so much. He was all trained hard, but in terms of characters and big drinkers and dominant figures, you just had plenty in that team. Yeah. You know, or blokes who pushed the boundaries on the piss. You know, or liked yeah. the drink. How did Junior go crowling his all? He sort of tried to join in, yeah, and that was what I, that was what I was saying. He'd, he'd, he'd get in and he'd start slurring his words, and I knew he didn't drink, <laughs> but it was just <laughs> really? weird. Like he, we were getting on the piss and carrying on, and Junior would come in and because he loved his guitar, yeah. he tried to fit in. Yeah. But there, were, as you said, there's a couple of A graders. <laughs> we had we had a team. Um, we had BK. BK yeah. was my roomie, and when he goes, yeah, he's up there with the best. Yeah, it was a ter- it would be terrifying room with him if he flicks the switch, wouldn't it? Oh mate, he. He, a couple of my mates came over from England, uh, came over to England to watch the World Cup, and I was room with BK. BK were the only ones. We we were just every other rep team. You'd go into a draw, or well, they'd pick the names out of a hat <coughs> to room with. Yeah. But BK and I would always go together because I think we're the only ones who could tolerate each other. <laughs> he came home one night, and I had my mate Ryan call. I don't know you you, you would have met him. Yeah, they call. He was staying in my room. I said, "Just sleep on the floor after the final." And <laughs> BK came in. Oh my god! He goes, "Who's this?" <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, and Cause is going, "Hi, hi, hi, Ben." He picks him up because Cause only a little. Yeah. He looks like a, a little dwarf. Picks him up and just hurls him across, <laughs> like literally throws him across. <laughs> Cause lands on the desk in, in, the, in the hotel and just lying there. And I said, "Cause, don't move." If you're trying play to play dead, yeah, play dead. Um, yeah. So we had, yeah, we had, a, we had a terrific, uh, 
terrific off field. Good yeah. team on field, yeah. but probably better off field. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a big year. That, that final series. I guess you talk about both games. First of all, the the, the um, you beat us, Canberra. We 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 play. You get beat by Parramatta first That's week. That's right. Yeah, we play Canberra at Footy Stadium. It was my tenth game or something. Uh, and you beat us. It was close early, about eight nil at half time, six nil half time, and you just put yeah. us away in the second half. Then you play Newcastle. You're down sixteen nil or gone. And, and you just come back in the second half, which was a <clears> stirring <throat> performance. And the Knights arguably had a better team that year than they did the, the next the yeah. year when they won at the fo- like in two thousand and one. What what was that like? Because that's and the stadium was chockers. Chockers. We were gone yeah. half time. That was the sixteen. So that's the famous. Uh, Joey giving a Rico. What's you doing for Mad Monday? He, he did say, yeah, of course you yeah. will. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember Darren Albert scored in the corner yeah, and did the blow kiss to, kiss the, to camera. the camera. <clears throat> Graham Murray, the great that was right on half time. Right on it? half time. The late great Graham Murray, who you know gets a probably doesn't get enough credit for for us winning the comp in two thousand two yeah. because he he was. Um, I mean, Ricky was was good, but Muzza had changed. Like M- Muzza stood up yeah. to to that pretty powerful Board. club. You know, uh, the day he kicked Nick Politis out of, he kicked every he kicked anyone well, out. That's, Mate, that's I, I, brave, I, brave. He said, he said anyone who's not um, part of the team get out of the room. This was a semi final. No, there wasn't semi. It was just a normal game. And Nick and all um, the board looked around and said, "Yeah, get out." And Ma- yeah. Muzz went, "No, no, you too." Yeah. And we wow. just went, "Shit." Anyway, sixteen two well. didn't go down well. He got sacked the next year. <laughs> <laughs> 16-2 And Muzza didn't say anything All he said He goes Boys I'm going to leave you with this And he just replayed the Computers were something new But he somehow managed to get That vision At, at of, half time At half time And it happened Three minutes earlier Yeah he, he managed to get that vision Said boys look at this Look at this fucking Blood Look what he's doing yeah. to us Just went out there And yeah Won the second yeah. half Freddie was on fire Yeah he's unbelievable Freddie He threw a pass to uh, Heggs Yeah Heggs was out there the Right side Dave Solomon Crossy and Mini Down the right yeah. hand side I can't remember that But it's, yeah, oh, yeah. I believe you Yeah it went the length But Matty tells a story That during the week They changed their Defensive structure They said Instead of sliding They were up and in Yeah So Freddie they kept doing it apart. Just picked them apart Took Joey's in his head Yeah Joey spat the dummy Joey Through spat his the mouth dummy. It never does <laughs> um, We used to play the Bronx Broncos were an amazing team That year um, I don't know uh, if you agree with me, but if I think if Shannon Heggie gets held up by Darren Lockyer early First in the game, minute. if he scores, it's a different game. Because even, even though they they won comfortably, but they didn't, not, not won comfortably, but... They made so many... Bra- if it wasn't for Diamond now, Yeah, Diamond, but they were always sort of in control. Yeah, you know? you, yeah, you, yeah. You, just, you just kept it close enough that... We uh, kept... Yeah. I we, think we, Fitzy... We, do you score in the left-hand corner? Fitzy hits the crossbar. To make it 14. That would have made it 14-8. Yeah. Was, yeah. But it was, you definitely held your own, but you think if you get away, because Brisbane were hot favourites, if you get off to a... If Heggie gets that ball down... Yeah, it's a different story. And Lockie wasn't known for his defence, online defence back then. Nah. You're right. We started off good, and then that was the year of unlimited interchange. Yeah. So they'd made sixty odd yes. interchanges. That game. forward pack was massive. Shane Webke, I don't know if you remember, he broke his arm yeah. in the lead up to, to the, that final, that grand final. He took the hit up from the kickoff and got replaced. So they made sixty odd. We made sixteen. Ridiculous. Yeah. And they had massive men, didn't they? Like oh, the Thorn and Thorn, Talis, Carol, Carol, Webke, Petro, and the two wingers. Lottie and yeah. Wendell, yeah, they're a good side. So, so I won. You get trounced by the Knights in the first week of the semis. Yeah, bounced out. Obviously, uh, Muzz gets um, gets replaced by Sticky. What was your first thoughts of Sticky? Did you know Sticky? Because ideally, if you don't know Sticky and you just known him as an opponent, you wouldn't have a great rap at him because he's one of those blokes that hate you. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. if you're an opponent. Yeah, definitely. So, what was your? Had um, you you'd come across him anywhere or knew much cro- about him? He crow packed me. In a game? Oh, yeah, he's a big crow pecker. (laughs) (laughs) He's a little arsehole. He came in, but he was like, he was only 32 or 33 or something. He was. He was young. And he just won the uh, Jersey Fleet competition. Yeah. Yeah. So he came. Amazing effort when you think about it. Dean Pay and uh, Cardi. Cardi. So it it just changed everything. All of a sudden, because I'd only been coached by like Mazza and. Gus, yep. who didn't really have, it, it, there wasn't the assistant coach. Yeah, that sort of came. I mean, every club has it now, but it was the first time I'd we'd had an assistant, a forward yeah. coach, and then so when when Dino, who I used to love, you know, growing up, yeah, Dean Payne, Payne Cardi, like gosh. Anyway, so well, for me, I was probably more impressed having those two. Yeah, 
but it didn't take long for Sticky to stamp his yeah. uh, authority. Because first day he said, he goes, mate, when we used to play you blokes, you blokes are soft, soft underbelly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and um, we said, fuck right, oh. Because Freddie played with him. Yeah. So Freddie, they were, they were teammates. But he was so hard on Freddie. Yeah. So hard. And I think that was a plan, yeah. just to show look when we I'm not I'm not, I'm here to to do something. Never trained as hard yeah. in that off season um ever. It was just brutal. And then you you because I signed. I think because you left it they had money to sign me. Um and you were like eighth or seventh, mid season. We we won one out of yeah. the first six. I tell you, I, I go to Clayville Hotel. I s Campbell, we play mid season up here somewhere and I start the night and I'm going with chimes to Clay Valley Hotel. Yeah. Meet Rico there. Gus comes. Sticky. And at the time Rico brings Ginch. Yeah. Now I didn't know who Ginch was, you know Ginch is obviously Ginch is a um high profile man with nine, but he's yeah. just a as you great mate of yours, he's such, such a down to earth bloke. Yeah. You know? Well I didn't catch his name. Because I was so in awe of, oh, there's Gus Rick. So you're, you're about to sign. So I'm sitting, yeah, talk, yeah. they're trying to, you know, take, yeah. and, and I I miss Ginger's name. Yeah. I just think he's Rico's mate because he's just, he's just dressed up in boardies. And, yeah. and anyway, we're talking about money and deals and, he, and Ginger starts going, mate, I, I think you want two years, you want three, and I'm thinking, what the fuck is Rico's mate talking about? That? Like, <laughs> what's he doing? Um, but it was a, that, that club, like Sticky and that, those blokes were so, so, um, they had big, like you said, big board members, big egos, and Sticky had one himself, in a good way. Yeah. Well, uh, they're all powerful men yeah. in their own right. And it's funny how it all worked. Because yeah. the back end of the season, you just went wooshka. We, yeah. Because when I signed, you were eighth, and I thought, beautiful. And then you just went and won the comp, and yeah. I went, no, fuck, yeah. I don't want that. We, we changed our defence halfway through. You're not changing our defence. We we basically, was it was called red, I think it was red or something, which meant you had to get three in the tackle. Yeah. So it was called, I think it was called Red Man or something. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. My memory shot. But in that, and before that, it was only, you're, you're on the defensive line, and if you're third man, you want to get back yeah. to the other side. Well, we had to change our whole thinking. Ricky said, if you're there, you jump yeah. on. So that was the gang tackle yeah. era. Pick them up. And Pick them up and then hold them up. Yeah. Third bloke, get under them and drive them back. Well, the rule so changed because you were driving them back 10 metres. Yeah. So they ruled, once they ruled if a player behind touches, yeah. Yeah, so... It, it was it was quite ingenious. So I don't know why we didn't do it at the start yeah. of the year, but whoever came up with that it might have been Dino, might have yeah. been Stick. I'm not too sure. But and then everyone started copying. Yeah. It was a three yeah. man three man gang tackle. Well, dominated for the next four or five years. It wasn't until the Tigers come along. Sheenzy played that sort of short little passing. Yeah, game out the back to, so, to beat beat that. Yeah, it was we were def- yeah we became a defensive side. It was an amazing run you boys were on. You, you know, I was thinking, obviously Stacey Jones just played the. Um, I'll get you to talk about the build-up because it's the first premiership since 1975. Yeah. So that's just 2002. So what's that? 27, 27 years. Yeah. So that the build-up, but Stacey Jones scores it to uh, put them ahead, but then you just blow them away late. Yeah. How, how's the whole week? How's did you understand? Because obviously Rico's got a hammy injury. injury. Yeah. The cl- club hadn't won in 27 years. Just the. Uh, well, the whole importance of, of that win for the club, and did you realise it for, at what well, point in your career? Yeah, I, I think because I'd already signed to go to South, yeah. so I knew personally I knew this was my last chance to to win a comp. <laughs> well, I did, you know, I wasn't. I was. What was the difference between South and Roosters? Six hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but two thousand, when we made the grand final that yeah. week, right? And this is where I understand people say you got to lose one to win one, because that week, fan day. Um, open session yeah. media grand final breakfast grand final bre- it's just a whirlwind you don't we didn't train and you just get caught up in it like I was doing interviews <laughs> mate with that, the, down the pub here, down the beach road they had um, like a fucking free night and come down and get on the piss <laughs> and come and meet the boys so a couple of us went down there and it was all of a sudden it's Sunday morning mm. and you got to play a grand final so you we, oh, you weren't you missed it yeah whereas 2002 I, I knew what was coming, yeah. so and we all knew what was coming, and we we're a little bit old on a little bit more yeah. serious because we just sort of fell in two thousand. Didn't really expect to beat the Broncos. Broncos were huge favourites, so in two thousand and two we were the favourites, so we played like that. Yeah, you know. So although we were behind at half time or eight six yeah. two points, I knew we were gonna. Yeah, I knew we were gonna win. Uh, mate, the celebrations. Oh, I, I was still in Canberra. I might have moved to Sydney. You know, ready to start. At the Roosters in six yeah. or so weeks, but it was one of the greatest Mad Monday. I don't yeah. know if it was an outfit or celebrations. You're pushing Brett Mullins in, 
it was like Hannibal Lecter. He was on one of the yeah. beer trolley, like your trolleys. There was a paint. There was a paint store next yeah, door. Yeah, and then he was wrapped up. He was wrapped up, and all the cameras were on Channel Nine and Channel Seven, and all the TV oh, cameras. Cat. It's one of the funniest things. It was. It was. It was good. So it was a dress up. And I, you, you know, what I love about you too. With you, no one laughs harder at their own jokes than you. And, and like knowing you now, I've ever seen you. You were that proud of yourself and just laughing. Yeah. We, and because you're coming up the road, and the boys are inside, and you can just. Oh, I, yeah, I, I can see it. how like the boys are gonna love this. I can see how happy you were going. This is so good. They're gonna love it. On yeah. the yeah, you know, Fletchy boy, you've, you've done, done it again. again. <laughs> that was the. That was when we had um, little Shane Cogan. Now, Cogs um, actually just had a heart attack. So if you listen to this, Cogs, get well, my friend. Cogs is, is a little fella from Bondi, uh, Bronny. And we were spinning him. So we had all this uh, vegetable oil. And for some reason, he fitted into a helmet. <laughs> like he's tiny. Like a, a war helmet. Yeah. You know, like a... And yeah. he's sitting in this... And we were playing drinking games. But Cogs was... If he pointed like, to like you... spin the bottle. So we spun it. <laughs> spun the bottle, but it was a human. It was, it was a human. He'd spin around. <laughs> like he's tiny little fella. And he'd spin around. And then he'd just lay back and go... <laughs> <laughs> wherever he landed. Oh, mate. It was awesome. It was so much fun. Um, yeah, went for a couple of days and then we went to. How was the look, Leeds Club, when you got back? Yeah, it was oh, good. Massive. Well, the, 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 come because we had the open top bus, yeah. did a loop down the beach, came back up here, and like it's funny, a lot of lo- locals who I never knew were Eastern Suburbs supporters yeah. came out. Like they say, <laughs> they you know, the Chooks are quite fickle supporters, only because there's so much to do. Yeah. You know, they do expect to, especially the last twenty years, they expect to win. <laughs> yeah. you know? and. Went to the Leagues Club and then just kicked on. We ended up going to Wallaby Bar. Yeah. And BK, again, my man. <laughs> just, turned he up turned up I think he stayed <laughs> at Did you remember him that night, did he? Uh, yeah, you I think he stayed at my, my job. Or I stayed at, I might have stayed at Rico's. Don't know. But it was, yeah, Rico's was always the house to go back to back in those days. Oh, I wish I could go back there. <laughs> I wish I could go back to those days. Well, you saw him with Souths, right? How, did, did, Russ, did Russell come at there? Nah, what, you got any Russell there. stories? Or, or did you have anything to do with him? You know, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, he, well... You always hear the stories of him at training, and he um he wasn't part of the he wasn't part of the club at yeah. the time, um but I did sort of start meeting him. I knew he was a supporter because he would remember Tom Cruise. Yeah. You, you, they got back in the comp two thousand and two. Yeah. I, I do have a good story for you. <clears throat> it was actually I was here actually when I got the phone call. Um, two thousand and two, they got back into the comp. Yeah, remember and um. They struggled, but yeah. he promised that team that if he'd make, if they made the eight, he'd take them to Playboy Mansion. <laughs> and I ne- remember that. Do you remember that story? Yeah. So it was quite. It was. It was public knowledge. So in two thousand and three, I had. But it was a safe bet because I'll never make. Yeah. It. So I hadn't. I hadn't met Russell, but I'd seen him at the games, and he never came into the dressing room. That year, two thousand three, we were shocking. <laughs> like when he won four or five games, which compared to now, it's not a bad game. Compared, <laughs> compared to Canterbury, so we're teams, flying. Yeah. Um, and I was living here and at the time Waverley Council were doing this thing called um, it was like for it was like a program for mentally disabled yeah. people and I had a guy who was, who was cutting my lawn he actually used to cut that lawn here and his name was Russell so it's it's, in, it's the middle of it's about round 9 or round 10 and I get a phone call one day and I answered and I said, hello. And he goes, Fletch. I go, yep. He says, Russell. And I went, oh, hey, Russell. I think it's my Russell. <laughs> my Russell had no there. frontal lobe, <laughs> and um, which means he had no memory. Yeah. And so I said, hey, Russell, um, how, how are you? And he goes, yeah, good. <laughs> and I'm going, mate, you came yesterday. Um, terrific job, by the way. You know, I was all about really Plus, pumping, yeah, him up. pumping him up. I said, mate, you, you did a good job. But you Just to let you know, you, you left your offcuts. But it's yeah. okay, next time. And he goes, yeah, yeah, Fletch, it's Russell. So I mean, what are they doing, like community? Painting like, the joint. Yeah. Like just... Get him, get him back in, moving, yeah. yeah. Get him in the in the workforce, you know. And he was a terrific bloke. And then he goes, "No, no, Fletcher's Russell." I went, "Yeah, yeah, 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 Russell. I know that. And how's because he got the frontal lobe brought, so he doesn't remember <laughs> what's going on." And I said, "How's how's Deb and the kids? Are they all good?" And he goes, "No, no, no, it's Russell Crow." <laughs> and I, as I mentioned, I hadn't met him, and I went, oh, "Fuck no, it's Russell Crow." So then I start thinking it's Natty Wood, my former teammate, Woodsy, who would ring up and pretend he was a journo. He was a renowned for prank oh, phone calls, prank, wasn't he? Prank everything. Yeah. He was a king. So I'm thinking I was with Natty Wood. So he goes, uh, I go, oh, is it? Okay, Russell, how are you? He goes, yeah, good, thanks. And he goes, oh, how's Meg? Because he's going out with Meg Ryan yeah. at the time. How's Meg Ryan? Oh, I said, how's Meg? You know, how, is she good in the cot? <laughs> like I said something more crude. What did, what did he say? And then there was awkward silence. And he goes... Fletch, <laughs> Russell, 
Russell Crowe. And when he <laughs> dropped his voice, I knew straight away yeah. it was him. And I've just gone, fuck, uh, how do I get out of this? I went, oh, Russell, so, sorry, mate. Um, how, how are things? Because I was backpedaling. <laughs> are you captain of this thing? I'll skip up. Yeah. And then he goes, mate, tell the boys to wear some good clobber on Wednesday. We're going somewhere. So he hangs up. That was, that was the end of the conversation. So it's a Monday. I, my job to ring around, ring the boys. And my, just ringing young blokes. Because basically we're a team. A lot of the blokes were ex- Reserve grades yeah. the clubs. Yeah. And we had Johnny Sutton who was making his debut and Nathan Merritt. They were all babies, weren't they? Babies, 18 and 19. So, so it was my job to ring around. So by the time I got to the six or seven player, they go, well, Fletch, why are we wearing good clothes? Where are we going? And I went, look, I don't know. But we could <laughs> be going to the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> right? It's round nine. In the middle of, in the middle of the season. By the time I get to Sato and Nathan Merritt. How I'm many going, games you want at this stage? None. 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 None from nine. What makes you think the Playboy Mansion? Because Listen. of 2002. Yeah. I don't know. And he just said, dress well. Say dress well. I'm just thinking in my head, yeah. Russell Crowe, he's a movie star. Like yeah. he, Gladiator. Like, he was flying. He was the biggest actor in the world at the yeah. time. And I just start, my imagination start, starts going. So by the time I get to Sato, who's the 17th man, I said, Sato, you're not going to believe this, bro. <laughs> we are going to play by Mitch. So we get to, we get to training yeah. the next day. It's Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, sorry. It's Wednesday, and everyone is just frothing. They all think they're going to All think they're going to play, play by Mitch. We go out to train. Best training session I've ever had. In any in any level, mate, we were hopeless. But that day, that training session at Redfern Oval, how excited! Oh my God, blokes are just everything was crisp, and because we're pumped, so yeah. we get back into the dressing room, and we're getting out all our gear on, and boys are going, mate, we're going to play boy manager because the word had spread, so yeah. we were all believing, you know. Yeah. You got to throw out what you believe. It's a secret, <laughs> Oprah says. So then, <laughs> we're all talking about, oh, who's your favourite? Who's your favourite play play game? Yeah, play boy yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to get in the grotto with Hugh. I wonder what Hugh's like, you know. Let's get on those Garys with him. And um, <laughs> he then, uh, and then Nath Merritt goes, Fletch, I don't have a passport. <laughs> and when the, the room just stops. And I go, everyone looks at me and goes, shit. And I went, no, don't, don't, don't need one. Don't need one. Nath, <coughs> private plane. We're just going to take <laughs> off, land in the compound. It's a, like Russell's got a private plane. We don't go through customs anyway. And the boys go, no, you're right, Fletch. I said, fucking Nath, I'm right. So they're, they're all getting ready to go. And then someone says, but, Fletch, we've got training tomorrow. It's we like Wednesday. We've got training in the morning. And then we're playing the Melbourne Storm on Saturday. What are we going to do? Room stops, looks at me. And I go, time difference. <laughs> time difference. So it, it's like 24 well, it's hours. Let's have you get over there and come back. So it's Tuesday over there. We'll come back. Go over there, have a good night, fly back that morning, and we're going to land back. It's Wednesday again. And they're going, oh, that's great. You know, yeah. So we get in the bus, and we turn out of the Chalmers Street thinking, I'm oh, going to mascot. We don't go. We continue down Elizabeth all the way down to Woolmaloo. So we're not going to the Playboy Mitch. Mm. But they're going, where are we going, Fletch? I said, well, I don't know. We turn up at the W Hotel, which is now the something else, down the loop, and we get out, and we get ushered into a function room, and Russell Crowe's there, and he... You know, we hadn't met him. No one had met yeah. him, and I was just in awe of him. He's such a, such a charismatic. He's just come off gladiator. Too, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So he was quite, he was quite, um, quite uh, impressive. Anyway, so we're hanging out. It's about nine o'clock at night, and then he goes, "Oh, we, oh we, sorry, we, he had um, Murphy Hughes and Shane Warne come yeah. out and, and talk to the boys. Talk to the boys. Just a bit of a motivation, you know. That's what he said. He goes, boys, you haven't won a game, and I'm just here, you know, give you a bit of um, inspiration. So then." It's nine o'clock and we're about to leave, back to training. And he brings out a bottle of absinthe, and absinthe is is banned in Australia. The good one, it's like they call Does it the green cherry. Yeah, there? you go mad on it, the the grouse one. And he had the grouse yeah. one it's from H Hungary, I think. Well, Van Gogh, the the artist, artist yeah. cut his ear off on it. Like it sends you mad. <laughs> I should cut my nose off on it. It'll save me a fortune. <laughs> I remember his nose. <laughs> so, so he comes out, puts his puts his um. A shot each, and the boys are looking at me, and I just go, oh, boys, one one shot's not going to hurt. Bang. Down they go. Mate, then never won with the boys. Never won. It was like we weren't through 10 bottles. 10 bottles later, mate, we're going mad. And it's on. <laughs> Blake's a fucking cheering and carrying on. Then we're halfway through the nine. It's about midnight, and Russell goes, mate, get your best defender. Just having a normal chat. I go, what do you mean, get your best defender? He goes, well, I want to have a game of footy. I go, who, Russ? He goes, me and Keith. I said, who's Keith? Anyway, Keith was his um, PA. So I just grabbed Paul Stringer, and no one's paying attention. It was just me, us four. And so here he comes running at me, and he goes, he's got the little footy. You wouldn't be interested anyway. You go, I don't want to get on no, the piece. No, no, I was just, it was just, anyway, so it was just, it was an odd time. But, you know, I'm just starting to think, well, you know, you've got to humour Russ. He's put on this beer for us. I'll put the drink on for us. So anyway, Russ comes running at me. 
and I tackled him how I always have my whole career and I miss him. And he, got, <laughs> he, he runs behind me and dives down behind him imaginary set of pace. Anyway, he goes like that. Anyway, I said, good on your ass, so I kept walking. Back to the bar. This is all allegedly, by the way. Just to let you know, allegedly. <laughs> and then um, I take two steps and I get shoulder charged. Mm. Or get pushed in the back. And it's Russ. And he just stops in front of me and just goes, you fucking dog. <laughs> you're a fucking cat. You're fucking, you're the captain of this team. You're a waste of money. You're South, South Sydney's worst ever captain. And I mean, he was right, but he didn't have to say it in his face. You know? so anyway, the boys have jerried into what's going on. And it was just that quiet. Anyway, I got the shit. So I said, Russ, let's, let's just do this again. So he, <laughs> he he basically gets up and runs at me, and I I get under his ribs and I I drive him. Yeah, jam him. Jam him, and um, I put him through a wall. <laughs> put him through a wall. And the boys are just going, mate, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what, why are you doing this? And I was just I don't know whether it was the absent or what, you know, just the anyway. At the end of it all, Russ, is there any point that you just gone what? What have I done? Not really, you? not really. I've just because so there's a massive hole in the wall. Yeah, big hole in the wall. Russ is just boys didn't know what was going on. You know, what, what, uh. why are you doing this? Anyway, <laughs> Russ pops up, just shakes his head, and just goes like, "That's what I want to see." That was my like, that was his motivation, right? So he's just we end up just getting having a, a terrific <laughs> night. We're on the fucking pier, so we end up going to Sugar Reef. Not all, not Russ didn't go. <laughs> a lot of us went to Sugar Reef till six a.m. This we, is Thursday night. Thursday, no, Thursday. Thursday morning. We and just play Saturday. Langers was the case. Langers, we don't train Thursday. Yeah. Langers gets us off. We play Saturday against the Melbourne Storm. This is the year Billy's making his yeah. debut. I don't think Cameron... Oh, Cameron would have been there. there. Yeah. Cooper wasn't there, but there was a gun side. Yeah. Anyway, we beat him 42-10. And we, d- we do not win another game all year. <laughs> it was just, mate, it was... I, I could go into the night, but it was just... But you could get away with things back then too, weren't you? You could, yeah. There was no, well, there was cameras, but no camera phones. You got, what, it was a tough old year. Especially the first couple of years. I'm not too sure this was the same year, but I'm pretty sure it was under Paul Langmack. I remember a game, the Broncos were a red-hot favourites, and you blokes, you blokes were pretty poor, to say the least. But It was 2003. You, we, we had, did you just get a one-on-one rake? Like, he's won yeah. the game, and Langers come 20, back in the shit. 22-20, yeah. Lockie makes a break at the Sydney Football Stadium. You, you blokes are winners, and you were, 20, you were a shit team. This was, and was, they were the red, it was round three. Yeah. We got beat by Canterbury, first round, like 20, that gun yeah. Canterbury team. We like only by two points, so we're going, we're going good. And then we play the Broncos round. I don't know what happened round two. Round three, we're in the lead. Broncos are playing terrible. It's just one of those games, right? There's no one at the game. Lockie makes a break to win. Shane Walker comes from nowhere, cuts him down that far <laughs> from the post, right? The fifth tackle. Twelve seconds going on the on the clock on the clock. We're home, and I remember I ran and I was lying on the ground next to him, and. He gets the ball, walks, Shane Walker gets the ball, plays the ball, and strings there, Paul String. Actually. I go, String, you got dummy half. He goes, just no. one the clock, 10 seconds. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. Get the fucking wing to do it. I said, String, just fucking do it. Anyway, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds, plays the ball, goes out from dummy half, a metre out of his own line. Gordon runs in, rakes the ball out. <laughs> it's like the world slowed down. It's like slow motion. <laughs> Bounces once, twice. Brent Tate picks it up, up scores. scores in the corner. So, I, so we lose. So I'm walking off the field. Up the tunnel. Up the tunnel. Wayne Bennett was the coach, but he had come down, obviously, when we made the tackle, got in the lift. Was the unaw- get to meet yeah, you down. Yeah. was unaware that what had happened in that time he was in the lift. So he came on and he went, congratulations, shook my hand. So he thought he'd lost. So he, Wayne Bennett thought he'd lost. And I'm going, fuck, I know. Fuck it. Congratulations. Like patronising me. Going, yeah. That's just fucking shit. Shit go, Wayne, you know. Anyway, I get in the dressing room and he's laying it's just going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just going, yeah. And we all come. He goes, "What's wrong?" I go, "Mate, did you not see?" So Lang is Langers coming, must have scored the tackle. He's straight in the straight in the lift, straight down the, into the dressing room, and um, going mad. Just a bit like us, just dancing. Going, yeah. And I go, "Langers, what are you doing?" He goes, "Mate, we lost." He goes, "Damn it, ah, bullshit." I said, "Mate," so he ran down to check. He didn't believe it. I've never seen. A man, I've never seen a man say crash. I love a great story he tells when Chris Walker was there. And he goes, if anyone doesn't want to be, they can piss off, you know, just trying to yeah, yeah. little throwaway line threat. And he just turned around and write something board and he heard this, <laughs> see, walks with, I'm out, Langers. <laughs> Langers, what are you doing? Sit down, walk, sit down. <laughs> uh, after South, you sign at Wigan. How would you like it over there? Loved I, it. I, I love Wigan too. Loved it. Great club. Yeah. Great people. Loved it. 
I um, you'd have played with Paddy Richards over. You played with Paddy, yeah, played Paddy. Lockers, Sean O'Loughlin, Trent some, Barra came. Trent, some good blokes. It, it was just I, I, Tommy Little. What was Tommy there? Tommy was yeah. there. Yeah, um, it's just totally different because so you, yeah. you you play your game. You walk five meters down the road. No one knows who you are. Yeah, you know you have to be a so you get away with a bit. It was just Britt and I went over there. Kids were over there. My middle child was born over there, so we love we love traveling. Yeah. So you pl- every home game was a Friday night. So Nobby, the coach, Brian Noble would give you if you won, he'd give you Monday off. So we were going to Spain, yeah. Italy for three oh, days. Island. Yeah, it was just Paris, unreal. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it, man. I, a lot of them didn't um, do much traveling. I remember we got a weekend off. I went to South of Spain down to Marbella. Yeah. It's like a three-hour trip. Yeah, you know? and they go, mate, that's so, such a far flight. So, mate, three hours in this country, you're still halfway in the middle of. That's the, right. You know? Yeah, it's that's five hours to Perth. You know, but that's that. That was the the English way, right? You just stay. Yeah, stay at home. I, yeah, I love I love weekend. I wish I um, wish we had it more time over. Yeah, there, actually. I, I think the same. Uh, so you retire? How did you handle it? Did you find it challenging? No. Nah. Retiring? Nah. Because nah. I came through that era of working. But did you know what you were going to do? Well, I knew I'd get I knew I'd get a job. I, yeah. I knew I wasn't really worried because growing up, it was always footy and you'd work. So I I had the I had the work mm. ethic to, you know, it was just what you did. Yeah. The, the, the playing footy was just something that sort of was in the middle of it. I um, you know, I think of one of the great smoke and mirrors of all time. Like when I think of you, like you're super smart. Like you're super smart, like highly intelligent. No, no, I wouldn't say super smart. I just you're highly intelligent. Well, I'm worldly. You are, but you got a great, like great knowledge on sophisticated stuff. Well, no, but you just so happen to play the fucking clown better than anyone. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like do. You, You've made a living out of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, fuck, I obviously had... But, like, people wouldn't know how successful you are in business away, you know? The, well, the, I've got in But, but you're, you're extremely intelligent. Like, you, you're... You, um, you know, things that you're interested in, highly intellectual things and stories and, epi- like, stuff that's happened in life, you know? Like, you're, you're yeah. quite a highly intelligent bloke. That's why you're so funny, I believe. You're, you're quick wit. Well, maybe, yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm interested in. But do you, do you pl- like, you know, like, I... I say oh, I played the let the stories go about the drinking, you know. Yeah, when you, yeah, play, yeah, yeah. you let it, you know. No, you exaggerate I'll, more that side than you know playing that fool a little bit. You, yeah. I suppose. I suppose when you're when you when you're in there, it's a bit of a character time. It is you because yeah, that is you. That is me. But yeah. a lot of it's not you too, you know. Because you. Well, I can't. I think sometimes I can. I can go go the other way. Yeah. You know, if, so, if something interests me. Yeah. Like from example, my sauna. I'm gonna. <laughs> you're you tell me about the, the sauna. infrared sauna. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I do like. Yeah. I, I remember seeing someone sent me this thing when, like, in rugby league week, and they said, "What would be, what would you be doing if you weren't playing rugby league?" And I wrote, "I would, I would be a a script writer <laughs> for a comedy show." Yeah. Like I was, I was about twenty two, twenty. What would I say that? Yeah. I, I must have been Gene up. But I remember, like, before I got sacked from Fox, <laughs> you'd pick me up a lot. Yeah. Um. You know, every Sunday come past me, and you every like you sit there and go, mate, you'd say, "Have you heard this podcast?" I'm, like, I'm thinking, "What the fuck are you talking?" About? Like you, you right across everything, sport or yeah, you know, like, s- or like a, some some like the drug war or some, an arms dealer or well, that, something just... about chess, but they're all all different things and topics, yeah. and you I, know, I, I, and I'd be going, "Jesus, you, you have great knowledge on a lot well, of sophisticated stuff." Well, it's not really sophisticated. I don't. Have I know, a, but I don't have a lot of knowledge. I tell you what I do. I know a little bit about a lot. About a lot of shit, yeah. but I don't know. The but, you, facts. but you are quite smart. You're, you know, well, you agree with that? You're a bit, you're, yeah, some th- some things I am. Yeah, I think you are. Some things I am. And then you get fucking paired with Hindy. Yeah. You know what's funny about Hindy's funny now. I played with him. He was most boring. Like, yeah. Boring as bad shit. Yeah. I think. Well, he, speaking of playing, the, and he's a great actor. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, he does a great job. He's an unbelievable. How's he to work with? All right. And how, how hard is it to? No, he's well. He's um. How hard is it? Because it's comedy, and it's fucking hard to do comedy. Always being funny, and well, I think it's because we can play that, yeah. and we just give it to each other. Yeah. You know, like so. That's what the Aussie. That's what the Aussie. Um, what's up? What are we doing there? It's ten. Just to check the time. Ten past oh, ten. Right, right. <laughs> I keep myself saying you're at ten thirty. Um, yeah. Yeah, but we know our roles in that yep. sh- in that show. You know, you know, like you were ha- you had your role in that show. Yeah. And that's why it works. <laughs> what to not turn up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you just. But do you ever get hard thinking of ideas? And yeah, sometimes. Because like I remember reading a thing about some. I don't know. It wasn't about you. It was about someone else. But it takes a smart man to play the play the clown. You know. Yeah. But 
comedy's hard, especially when you can only it's based around rugby league, and it's the same thing. You know, it's not like you can be picking anything. You well, know? those those structured things, like those um, scripted stuff. Yeah. Sorry, they they're. they're I think they might be done, you know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But just the banter between mm. four blokes yeah. sitting on the lounge, that's funny enough, mm. you know. Or when we interviewed, like we got Cameron the other night when we, yeah. when we yeah. set him up with Cooper, young Cooper John. There's shit like that that'll, that'll go on. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm not I'm not that naive to realise this and that's not going to go forever. Yeah. So you just got to... The, the one you did with um, Munster was an absolute beauty. With the, old, when the um, devil? No, the, um, when they were getting... And Smithy, you're wiping the. Oh, when I was Raymond. Raymond, that's yeah. It. Like, Raymond. Mate, that how do you not laugh there? Like that's yeah. The Raymond was that was gold. I was like because like I said, you find your jokes funny. You find yeah. you find these situations hilarious. Yeah, you know? it, I was, and you're always up for a good laugh. It's like how did you control yourself? I, I don't know. Yeah. When you think back, maybe because you get the character. Yeah. Off, but the, the Smithy was that was he was petrified, mm. and like he made a complaint. Yeah. He was saying, who's, who's this? And the makeup girl <laughs> said something like, oh, he's just a student. And he's going, well, you can't be touching people inappropriately. You won't get a job. <laughs> and then I, I was acting a little bit like I was slow. And I, mm. I wouldn't look at oh, Sorry, Mr. Smith. Sorry, Mr. Smith. Yeah, that was a beauty. Yeah. That, that worked out Jeez, really well. Jesus, it looked good too. Um, who, who was your best teammate to play with? Best For any reason, reason. Could oh, be because they're the best I, or just you know, like for I'd play, play. I'd say Freddie. What was he like? Play? Yeah, for me. Because you... I've got my opinion of Freddie because he was my hero. Yeah. I played with him his halves. He, he became an unbelievable mentor, great f- close friend, but he was yeah. like, he was my mentor, you know? Were yeah. You, you was a similar age. I, I suppose uh, Freddie, because w- similar, like he, yeah. he, he was the, he was Brad Fittler, right? Yeah. So when he first came to Chooks, and I was like, I'm two, or th- I'm three years younger than him, so I'm thinking, oh, look at this bloke. He's a, yeah. But then realizing what he did in the game, um, how he could just turn it yeah. on. Like, I used to say to him, get on the piss and say, Freddie, why don't you just... I, I, I remember playing Newcastle and we were getting beat. And he, he was, it wasn't... It was a quiet game for him. Anyway, I was at lock and he was at 5'8". And I said, mate, just fucking... Whoever was the 5'8". Might have been Matty, might have been... I don't know who it was. I said, Freddie, like, just trying to get this mm. bloke... He goes, mate, Freddie, just put that left foot step on. Like It's, it's five minutes to go. I'm sick of this because it was one of those games just behind. Anyway, he got the ball, left foot step and scored. Sure. And I just said, what? what? I went on the piss. I said, why don't you just do that every time? <laughs> like, why wouldn't you just do that? Because it was so, you know, he'd come down the short side. Yeah. Every time he came down the short side, came with his left foot, he'd score. Mm. Big and strong. And, and that's I, a big, strong bastard too. I, isn't I, and I used to go to him, I said, why, why wouldn't mm. you do that every time? He did that in 2004 Anzac Day game. We were playing the Dragons. We are down 8-2. And I was calling the ball. He was really good to me that year because I was starting to be more confident and play better. So he let me control all the stuff. Yeah. But when things were tight, he'd jump in. Anyway, he goes, oh, get out of the way. I said, no, I'll hit you, Freddie. He goes, no, get out of the way. Just support me on the inside. Yeah. That's when he gets the ball 40 minutes out. Left foot, straight through. Left, left foot, foot again, you know, yeah. At 32, 33. Then yeah, three. like, why would he just do yeah, that every game? It's amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> could have done it at the grand final down 16, 13. <laughs> uh, who's in your gang? You, you, and uh, above all this, you're as charismatic character or charismatic person as, as they come you know like who's in the game there's not too many blokes that can hold court like you like you go across you know when I was at um, Wigan Paddy Richards and he goes mate he's, he's always spoke about you and I said mate I never we always cross paths you know yeah, you yeah, left yeah, south yeah. When I, no, we, so we never yeah. you know we'd had a few drinks here and there but never really yeah. you know so I didn't know you as well like that, but like so wherever you went you went you left a you know a big mark in terms I'm, of you're charismatic as they come. You know, well, a bit a like time. Yeah, Belliac would always say a bit about me, and you're actually the same. You know, you're like the Pied Piper. He said, but you're better than the Pied Piper. You don't need a flute. People just follow you. <laughs> but you are. You know, you gra- no, people I gravitate to you. I think because I, we're getting back to the impatient, yeah. and I get bored real easy. Yeah. Like, for me watching that show, we're just talking about that yeah. um, that last man. What is it, last yeah, man? Last year. I very rarely watch a series because I just. my. I've got no attention span. Yeah. So I suppose that's what it is. I just, you ask my, my mates growing up, they, if I, if we go out for more than, like if we're out in the piss for an hour, I'll start doing like games. I said, righto boys, let, <laughs> let's see who can throw this into that. Yeah. You know? Like, but anyone else says it, they go, fuck off. <laughs> you, you left 30 people there. Like the worst, mate, I've been there. There's stupid stuff and everyone's in and loving it. I don't know, maybe everyone likes, everyone's got a little, little bit of, um, 
Everyone wants to be that. But yeah, well, they like they like. Yeah, they'll get shaken up because you don't really give. I shouldn't say you don't care because you do care, but you're not worried about you know you don't get around with any ego, so you're just going let's have fun. You well, know, yeah. you're not worrying how it looks. Obviously, you're not doing anything wrong, but you're not. You just well, where some people can always be. Well, not what do they say? Ronnie Palmer says we're not here for a good time. No, not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. Okay, what time's Ronnie? Best time of your life. I say just give me the fucking time, Ron. He most. He's a bit of a. He's a bit of a hero to me, Ronnie Palmer. Like the way he lives his life. And oh mate, and if a nuclear bomb went off, there'd be two things that would survive: cockroaches yeah, and Ronnie Palmer. Yeah, absolutely. He's at least 128. Mate, he's, he, like, he's 70 this year. He's <laughs> is 70. He as fit as a fiddle, and always positive, Ronnie. Po- po- unbelievable. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, I, 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 you know, sometimes I think I should hang out with Ronnie more often, you know, because <laughs> you, you get so used to him when yeah. you when you see him around that when he's not there, you know, I just he, he, yeah, he's a terrific bloke, but yeah. um. I enjoy having fun as 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 do you. Yeah, lots of what life's about, isn't it? Yeah, there's a stage there. Anyway, by the way, let's just see if I can get this in, in the cup. Oh. <laughs> Nelly, <laughs> Nelly, Nelly. You know, I, you're the fucking brain I was just thinking. You're answering about eight questions before that, and you, I could see you fiddling around under me arm. <laughs> and we're going to be able to do a word association or something, and you're trying to grab to see what the words are. Oh no, no, no! But you're, you're getting the paper clip to add it to the story about throwing in your <laughs> genius mind. Now this is word association. We'll finish on this. Um, it's is been it, great. Is only one word? Or? No, you, it can be, it's a bit different. It can be a story, it can be a sentence, oh, okay. whatever you, what first thing comes to mind. Gotcha. So it's not really word association, I just didn't know what, what I could use instead of cat? word. Have you seen the new I cat? I seen the cat, cat walk out, how's it yeah. get, there's two dogs well here as well. Yeah. How does it Pixie, get on? Pixie, Dexter and Jinx. We've got Jinx yeah. as a COVID cat. How do you go with the cats? Yeah, I'm a cat, I think I'm more of a cat really? man. Speaking not, of cats actually, before we start this, what was, what was a young... Well, Anthony Minicello, we call him Mountain Cat. What was, and he's one of my best mates. What was he yeah. like as a young fella coming through? Yeah, just he's a little dap, though. He's, he's at four clues now in the big mansions. Just flying. But back Is that day, house built yet? I think it's still going. It's about 48 stories. Big, big house. But he was out. He was from Preston. Yeah, young kid. Liverpool came, kid. Came over. He had the big, wavy hair. Had the undercut. Um, me, me and Natty Wood used to terrorise him. Uh, we used to call him, I don't know what we used to call him, Spaghetti. I think Spaghetti, Minicello. But he was a quiet sort of kid. As they all are when yeah. they first come in, but he certainly opened up, didn't he? Well, he did. And we that's did. Right. So the first time I met him, he had a matching cap of tracks in on us. <laughs> Turn up in a Datsun or something. Now he's driving around in an Audi or Lexus yeah. or whatever he is. What, yeah, what's he what's Tom he Ford doing? suits. Yeah. He's, he's the best. He is the best, but good rig too. Yeah, yeah he's fit as a fiddle. I'm sure I could say the same. All right, we'll do this word association to finish yeah. off. You've been great, mate, and I thank you for your time. I know you've got to duck off, um, but we'll finish on this. Just story, word, whatever, whatever comes to your mind. Roosters. <laughs> great, me- no, I'm just trying to think. Great, me- great memories. Yep, um, and will always have a place in my heart. Yes, South. <laughs> not so great, me- <laughs> not so great memories, but uh, good memories as a kid. Mm. I, I, you know, I actually, I actually reckon I played some of my best footy at South. South. That first year, I got to play for Australia and mm. New South Wales from but because you went from the penthouse to the shit. And I think I, 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 yeah, I reckon that that year. That's probably those first two years was some of my best footy. Um, look, I, I I have fond memories of, of, of the bunnies as well. Mm. It was um, it was a childhood dream mm. to play for South. Of course, that Nick, was, um, Nick Politis, loyal mm. and scary. Sombrero. I'm not familiar with that. Term. <laughs> Gus, smartest man I've ever met, but also very odd. Ricky, good friend. Tough. The spitting is is a real <laughs> issue with me. Spitting, spit. he's a spitter. He's a spitter. Russell Crowe. Uh, an enigma. Mm. Grand enigma. final. The Mickey. <laughs> Grenade. Grenade. Uh, yeah, I don't regret it. Mm. No, no regrets. Maddie. No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, Maddie, Grassy, um, Maddie, very entertaining. Hindy. Very unentertaining. <laughs> Gordy. Scary. Uber. Taxis for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, mate, I, uh, I thank you very much for coming on. Obviously, you're hugely popular. People just say, when are you going to get Fletch? When are you get Fletch? But I want, I want to thank you getting on. Not only, and I say this seriously, I remember when I, I, when I was at Fox, they asked me to... Um, do the best origin team and I did it when people I played against or uh, what I remember and you were in mine you know you were 
you know, I don't think sometimes it gets overlooked the the, the humour you provide now, but you're one of the best back rowers I've seen and played against. So thank you, um, Brett. I really appreciate you letting me into this house of yours, and I'm glad Brit's not here because usually she wouldn't let me in and <laughs> let us hang out. No, no, no. no. And she- the good thing is, it's Friday morning, and we're finishing the interview Friday morning. I thought it might have been a Sunday afternoon job we finished no, it, but uh, one thing with Brit, she. she- you're her cup of tea. Yeah. Yes. No, Brick gives us as good as she gets. But, mate, thanks for having no, me. No, thank and, you, uh, Brett. I enjoyed this. It was fun. Yeah, it's good. We should do it again tomorrow if you want. I've got nothing on. Tequila? Yes, I'd love that. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> thanks, mate.